They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The remarkable Ben Delisi, the luxurious Celine, the modern Miss 60, the dynamic Isabel Moran, and Leela Rose creating vivid trend-setting designs. Having built a reputation with his glamorous evening wear that's vivid yet subtle, fashion designer Ben Delisi has grown into a fashion phenomenon. Born and raised in New York, Delisi studied sculpture at the Pratt Institute of Fine Arts in Brooklyn and worked in New York's garment region. 1982 saw him move to London where he would become a fashion designer whose clothing was to receive a loyal following and celebrity clientele. He made his debut at London Fashion Week in the mid-1990s and his elegant, beautiful evening wear, which has become instantly recognisable, has led to him winning the coveted British Glamour Designer of the Year Award two years running. Using luxurious fabrics and taking particular notice to fine details, Delisi's clothing is highly sought after by many women, not only allowing them to have a gorgeous wardrobe that's actually wearable, but also allowing them to feel sexy and stylish. His fans include none other than the stunning Kate Winslet, who has had many red carpet moments in Delisi, showing his ability to flatter beyond the catwalk. In 2002, she wore a snug-fitting red dress with a strap of scarlet roses, appearing on best dress lists. At the premiere of her film Little Children, she chose a black and white floral gown and looked gorgeous in the floor-length turquoise dress at the London premiere of Finding Neverland. She's not the only celebrity to shine in his evening wear, though. Jennifer Hudson turned up to her film premiere in a figure-hugging ensemble designed by the talented couturier. Having shown his collections at London Fashion Week since 1995, Delisi presented a collection that mixed sophistication, elegance, sexiness and boldness and created a stylish and wearable Spring Summer 98 collection with clothes that were simple, pure, elegant and just on the right side of being dangerous, appealing to the modern woman and women of all ages who are also very independent. His success saw the opening of his first boutique in Belgravia, an area of central London, which became the core of his business. By 2003, he was showing a soft and captivating collection with clothes that had a Moroccan feel, with fluid pieces in patterned velvet, silks and chiffon, while smoky greys mixed with scarlet, violet and black gave a sophisticated effect. He even used huge fake corsages or glittering diamante detailing on evening wear in simple shapes to bring the outfits to life. Later that year, he put on an attractive show sparkling with sequins and crystals. Floor-length evening dresses in bold geometric prints were slashed to the thigh and cocktail dresses were worn tight and short. Silk, georgette and chiffon were the key fabrics, but denim and leather also appeared in fitted jackets and hot pants. The collection was predominantly black, white and hot pink, with accents in lime green and aquamarine. Some of his collections in recent years have had that laid-back, carefree party girl appearance, with looks going from easy and low-key pants and skirts, with a modern take on real dressing up in prints and embellished planes. Sparkly tulle, silk georgette and crisp organza were the materials of choice, while busy prints in high colours such as apple, fuchsia and peppermint were combined with a strong black and white slant and micro sequins were used for details along with metallic stripes. He has drawn inspiration from the 1980s and from the novels of F. Scott Fitzgerald with rich colours and opulent fabrics, where his evening wear came in a variety of designs, from sparkling short dresses to halter necks and strapless print dresses with gold detailing. He may be an American, however Ben Delisi has firmly established himself as one of the leading designers in the UK, having created signature dresses that have sex appeal and also a modern quality for the modern woman.
Known for its shoes, handbags and ready-to-wear lines, the House of Celine is a French luxury brand that has grown into one of the most popular labels in fashion. Founded by Celine Vipiana in 1945, originally introduced as a made-to-measure shoe store for children, Celine debuted her ready-to-wear line in the 1960s and continued to grow her label into what it has become today. American designer Michael Kors in 1997 became Celine's first women's ready-to-wear designer and creative director, turning the brand into a major success, designing for them until 2004. His role was then taken over by Italian designer Roberto Menichetti, who presented just two women's ready-to-wear collections for the label. Sadly, though, he failed to win over critics or loyal Celine customers, even with his charming sensual collections that featured electrifying colors and gem hues such as emerald, sapphire and lapis lazuli. Ivana Romazic, a designer from Zagreb, Croatia, took over from Menachetti and presented her debut collection for the French Fashion House at Paris Fashion Week at the end of 2005. This collection pulled some influence from her experience working at Prada while staying faithful to the traditions of Celine. She showed lots of color in scrunched and ruffled looks, knee-length dresses and knee-high socks. A year later, she was showing a collection where volume and lightness reigned and inspiration came from a book called The Unbearable Lightness of Being, which deals with codependent opposites. She chose the contrasts of lightness and heaviness to inspire this collection using light colors in bold shapes. Silk pants with cuffed hemlines and transparent organdy dresses created some of the light silhouettes. Early 2007, she released Celine's Autumn Winter Collection, also inspired by a novel. However, this time it was the character Beatrice from the novel The Unmade Bed. Exhibitionist meets woman of mystery in this collection, with trench coats worn doubled up over a coat dress, and short jackets were layered with overlapping furs, providing different textures with pony, suede or mink. For evening wear, Japanese flower prints on dresses brightened up the collection and sequined t-shirts were matched with a simple straight skirt. For spring-summer 2008, Omazic was influenced by the 19th century women's wardrobe. Her aim was to liberate the movement of clothes without imprisoning the body, so she used corset-like structures. Models walked the runway in ultra-fine jerseys and liquid skirts finished with a brand of crinoline at the hands, sparking movement throughout the garments. The Celine collection boasted hues of white, vermilion, stone steel turquoise, electric pink, midnight and ebony. She sent out an edgy urban autumn winter 2008 collection in Paris, designing for the women of today and influenced by sports. The collection featured a number of different takes on the traditional trench coat and showed an array of autumnal shades including chocolate, rust and saffron to hot combinations of scarlet and violet. Celine's vivid collections have caught the eye of many fashion lovers and enthusiasts from around the world, including actress Vivica A. Fox, who also attends the label's fashion shows. And teenage sensation Miley Cyrus worked the red carpet at the 2008 Grammys in a shiny Celine dress with matching accessories. Designing luxury outfits and accessories that have been introduced in vivid and exciting ways while creating fashion for everyone over the years, Celine has climbed its way to the forefront of the fashion industry, constantly presenting collections that have impressed and inspired lovers of fashion from around the world. As one of the funky new labels on the fashion scene, Miss 60 has introduced some amazingly vivid looks that have gained a powerful following. Miss 60 is a brand of clothing that caters to your hip, young, trendy women of today that not only want the look of the rock and roll lifestyle, but also the sexy, feminine and up-to-date appearance of today's fashion. 
The clothing line is part of the 60 Group clothing brand, which began in the early 1990s. It saw international success and established itself in the United States. Not long after, the Miss 60 line was developed and continues to impress the fans who have now dubbed it Miss Sexy. Miss 60's creative director is Vicky Hassan, who is one of the co-founders of the 60 Group and has evolved the brand with the world-famous skinny jeans and high-quality looks. The who's who of entertainment and showbiz can now be seen at the Miss 60 fashion shows, where stars like Pink and Eve get up close and personal with the designer they've grown fond of. It's edgy, it's sexy, it's it's funky, you know what I mean? Like it's it's one of those lines that you can find, like it's a good performance line. In the last couple of years, the Miss 60 shows have featured skinny jeans and hot pants while also revealing a lot more skin. The result has been a very edgy look, appealing more to the 20-something crowd of buyers. Towards the end of 2007, the skinny jeans were tweaked for spring after a full year of high-waisted, narrow-leg silhouettes. The new styled jeans had a lower rise and higher hem, overall making them smaller and sexier. The colors were happy and shiny, including sunny yellows and pinks, 60s style prints and bright silver. In the beginning of 2008, 70s rock was all the rage for Miss 60, with cuts and colors being a lot less understated and more reminiscent of the 70s with psychedelic patterns and fur-trimmed coats. This collection even attracted celebrities like Anne Hathaway, Mila Jovovich, Ashley Olsen and Chloe Sevigny, who could all be seen sitting next to each other in the front row. The Miss 60 Spring Summer 2009 fashion show at New York Fashion Week also attracted some actresses and longtime fans of the label, including Rosario Dawson and gossip girl Blake Lively. For this collection, the designer was going for a new kind of female superhero look, a look for someone who is very strong and is always looking for something new and could find it with Miss 60's use of different fabrics, colors and techniques. Uh, inspiration for this season, I, I started from uh, a new kind of uh, superhero, a modern uh, hero. A girl very strong, uh, very conscious, uh, that uh, like uh, to find always something new. So it's a collection with uh, new fabric, uh, new crunchy material, a lot of nylon. Uh, always as, uh, always uh, Miss 60 do it, uh, it's uh, a lot of print. Uh. Miss 60 has put a whole new spin on designer denim and turned it into a must-have item by the in crowd. They have even managed to bring back the one item that most of us would be embarrassed to confess we had a pair of, acid wash jeans. The 2009 fall winter collection gave us jeans, jackets and jumpsuits in mostly black and white acid wash denim as well as patterned and print designs. Being a definite trendsetter in the fashion industry, Miss 60 is one of the hot new must-have labels. It caters for women who are in search for that exciting new outfit, something that is feminine yet intense. With vivid colors, seductive, creative and feminine looks, and not being afraid to experiment, Miss 60, making sure it stands out from the pack, is one of the most stylish labels around. French designer Isabelle Moron has joined the fashion elite with her vivid designs and indie styles that have won the hearts of fashion lovers and admirers across the world. By the age of 15, Moron was already beginning to design clothes. By the mid-1980s, she was attending classes in Paris and received work with already established fashion designers. Eventually, with the launch of her own line, Marant became one of those young designers who got rich quick by producing youthful, trendy fashions, showing her first show in 1995. In 1997, the rising young French designer unveiled her designs at the Segal Concert Hall with a collection that was inspired by French singer Serge Gainsbourg because of his excessive lifestyle, the general outlook reflected a hippie style. 
Most of her models walked on the catwalk dressed in long, transparent and elongated dresses in muslin, silk or synthetic fabrics. Retro accessories included afro wigs, mock fur hats and long gold chains. The colours were sombre, mostly black, bronze and camel. She produced a sloppy retro collection at the Palais de Cheo in Paris in 2000, with trousers in retro fabrics and outfits made of sheen fabrics, while some pieces came in a mix of colours from blue to white and red and blacks. Known for her masculine taste in dressing up girls, the designer unveiled her Autumn Winter 2007 collection at Paris's Ready to Wear Week, making her models wear thick wool socks matched with their jerseys under open high-heeled sandals, giving them a casual look even when they paraded in silk dresses. Her inspiration was drawn from girls she met every day when she created her collection, as she happens to work alongside many women on a daily basis. Some models wore their winter socks over wide silk pants or under wide skirts. Silk and wool have always featured amongst Moran's favourite fabrics for her creations, as, according to the designer, they feel and look more natural than others. Later that same year, Moran stuck to her philosophy of carefree dressing with her next collection, where predominant colours were cream, grey and brown. She showed belted linen tunics and rolled up shorts. Knitwear was cosy and long, while hemlines were short and fringed, or pleated skirts were worn with flat knee-high boots for an elegantly casual look. I worked a lot uh, on, the, on the fabrics and the, the way I was mixing up uh, the different uh, pieces of the collection to make a, a quite um, elegant attitude, but that have a, a kind of uh, easiness. For her next autumn winter ready to wear show, she sent out a collection that was more influenced by spring than winter, with shorts, linen skirts and cotton tunics layered over skinny trousers or mini skirts. The colour palette was light and breezy, dominated by creams, pink and pale blues. One of the few concessions to winter was huge fur hats. However, by 2009, Moran had unleashed her animal instincts. Leopard print jackets were matched with plain t-shirts and trousers, while soft fur jackets gave leopard print dresses a funky edge. Hip structured jackets gave girly silk floral dresses and ruffled silk animal print skirts a laid back look. The collection was sophisticated and smart with a sensible use of colours, plenty of wearable black and grey, with additional items in blue, pink and beige. She may be a designer that's not easily recognised by everyday people, but for many fashion fanatics, Isabelle Moran is just as talented as the world's biggest name designers. She has released her own jewellery and accessory line, had opened her first store in Paris by 1998, and also designs clothing for children. So it's pretty fair to say she's definitely one of the rising talents in the world of fashion and someone to look out for. Using vivid shapes and details, American fashion designer Leela Rose has risen through the ranks to become one of the favourite trend-setting fashion designers. Born in Texas, Rose attended the University of Colorado, where she graduated with a major in painting and sculpture. Early on in her studies, though, she began a business selling vests made from vintage scarves, and thus began her journey into fashion. She relocated to New York, where she attended and graduated with an associate's degree from Parsons School of Design. After having worked under a couple of designers, she launched her own collection in 1996 that was very feminine and featured lots of decorations. Her business grew after her clothing was worn by President Bush's daughters at his inauguration, which saw her brand begin to be sold in retail stores such as Bergdorf Goodman and Neiman Marcus. Since her rise to fashion fame, she has displayed many shows at New York Fashion Week where shimmering light dresses hit the catwalk. I mean, it's stressful, but it's fun too. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's kind of not like doing anything else. It's, it's a very unusual thing. I mean, you're excited about it, but yet you're really nervous and worried and just, it goes on for weeks and it's finally this 20 minute show and you're kind of like afterwards thinking, damn, all that for 20 minutes? <laughs> In 2007, she premiered her fall collection with a line that was all about elegance and comfort. To her, color was just as important as the designs, as the clothing was reminiscent of the fashion of the late 1960s. While most of the clothes were designed with simple comfort in mind, Rose did show a more formal side with her evening gown collection. Her signature collection included separates, dresses, jackets, and her recently added shoes, which she introduced as an inexpensive footwear line for the discount retailer Payless Shoes. Later that year, the Leela Rose Show featured a look the designer called a meeting of Catherine Hepburn and Audrey Hepburn. Rose said she looked to photographs and movies from the Hepburn girls in the 1940s for her inspiration. Catherine being a little bit more sporty, tailored, a little bit more man-tailored, and Audrey Hepburn being much more feminine and pretty. So what we've done is we've kind of blended those two girls and with these great little kind of sweetheart dresses, but with, you know, silk taffeta, very sporty anoraks over them. The color palette was full of bright, bold oranges, yellows, and a splash of metallics. Her dresses were the highlight of the show, some sweeping floor length and others short and sweet. Her fall 2009 collection used the rainforest for inspiration, as well as all the things you might find in there, such as insects. Even so, her models still looked chic wearing pea coats, explorer and mohair jackets in colors such as charcoal gray. Even her simple use of belts around the waist really turned this collection feminine. Like many fashion designers, Rose, who is still fairly new in the fashion industry, has received a loyal clientele, with many of her fans being well known in the entertainment industries. Actress Zoe Deschanel shimmered in a blue dress, adding an extra touch with a black velvet bow from Rose's Spring 2009 collection. Anne Hathaway also took advantage of the black bow belt, which was wrapped around her cranberry strapless Layla Rose dress from her fall 2008 line when she attended the photo call at the Venice Film Festival for her film Rachel Getting Married. And the always gorgeous Michelle Pfeiffer shone in her Layla Rose lace dress, also accessorized by a black waist belt when accepting her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. With her philosophy of design being about understandable shape and great fabric with unexpected detail, it seems Leela Rose has turned herself into a world-renowned designer with vividly created collections that have set trends around the world.